Hey, this is Matt from Custom Car Grills with a mesh install for the 2015 and newer Dodge Charger. First, the grill needs to be removed from the bumper after the bumper has been removed from the car. What I plan to do in this mod is to remove the crosshair from the grill and replace the mesh with something a little bit more stylish. I'll flip this around so I can separate the two parts of the grill. This will make it much easier to work on. And once on the back, there's two sets of clips here that are holding this together. There are some outer perimeter clips as well as some inner perimeter clips. The outer clips are fairly easy to deal with. I'll just slip a flathead screwdriver under the clip, push the tab in, and then it should release. The inner clips are just about as easy to work on. Once I get a screwdriver in at the correct angle, I can pry it back and push the remainder of the tab through the front. Repeat these steps along the entire grill's edge. Along the way, some extra prying between the two parts like this might help with keeping the two parts from accidentally reattaching themselves together. After the clips are released, then the front frame can be removed and set off to the side for now. Next up, I'll grab my rotary tool and equip it with Dremel's number 543 cutting and shaping wheel. This will be used to cut out the factory grill mesh design. Working from the back of the grill and staying about an eighth of an inch or more away from the edge, I'm cutting through the mesh while keeping a steady hand. Some areas are a little bit tougher to get in than others and different angles of approach may be needed. The main vertical part of the crosshair is a little too thick to cut from the back, so I flipped the grill around to the front and made a pass through it there. The horizontal portion of the crossbar was similar, but a quick cut from the front was all that was needed. With the bulk of the cuts made, the center of the stock grill can be lifted out. Any big chunks that remain can be trimmed down closer to the edge now. Again, the cutting and shaping wheel here is a good tool to use. Next, I'll grab a sander and attach a low grit sanding disc. Something like 36 grit will make short work of this. I'm just shaving down these remaining remnants quickly. And while I do like to use a sander like this one, if one's not available, then the top of the shaping wheel can be substituted in its place for the step. With some areas, I had to sand somewhat aggressively to sand through the otherwise thin spots of the outer edge. There are other ways to deal with these thin spots, but sanding through them seemed to work best for me. Now, I'll grab a dual action sander and equip it with an 80 or 120 grit sanding disc. I'm just working down the areas that were cut and rough sanded and trying to refine them down a little bit more before I get into the repair step. The wide upper edge is easy to manage with little effort. The thin lower edge proved to be a little trickier and using the sander on a lower speed might get better results than going full blast. Here's how everything looked after the grill is gutted out and sanded down. The lower and side edges have some small areas to repair whereas the top has a pair of big notches that will need some attention along with a series of V-notches that will need filling. To contain the repair material, I like sectioning it off with some aluminum HVAC tape. This stuff holds its shape fairly well and sticks to plastic well. I'll flip this back around to get started. We need to make sure that there's enough tape to cover the area being repaired, but I also want to make some tape fold around the edge so that the repair is contained. Some sections might work better if multiple smaller pieces of tape are used as opposed to one big piece. Essentially, I want to cover about 95% of this whole grill with a tape perimeter. The only exception here is with this lower center area. This will actually be repaired from the opposite side and the tape should be applied from the front and not folded over. With it all taped up, let's flip it back around to the front again. To fill in these gaps, I like to use Valvoline's Plyo Grip Plastic Repair Number 3. Other plastic repair fillers can be used if the installer has another that they prefer. I'll hit this up with a little adhesion promoter first so that I can ensure a good bond of the grill and Plyo Grip. Afterward, I'll start dispensing the repair material onto these areas that need filling. This stuff starts to cure fairly quick, so I only work on part of the grill at a time. The top and side edges don't need a whole lot and it's fine if they're overfilled some because I can just sand it down later. 
Once I have the plyo grip dispensed, then it's time to get a spreader out and work the material around so that it's fairly flat. But if I press too far in, I might need to refill the area a little bit to ensure that there's no low spot showing. Then just repeat these steps around the grill until all the gaps are filled, and also fill the lower center section from behind the edge. After the plyo grip is cured, then the tape can be removed. These are fairly small repairs, so be somewhat gentle while removing the tape. I'll reinforce it in a little bit in the next step. To do that, I'll apply and then brush over some additional repair material on the opposite side of the edge. This will strengthen up the edge and provide a good strong grill for years to come. The lower edge is still quite thin and that could probably use a little extra material to strengthen up that region. Be careful not to overfill the lower edge though because we need the clips from the grill frame to still properly fasten in. Next, I'll grab a few sanding discs. I'll start with an 80 grit and then work down to a 180 grit, and then finish it off with a 320 grit. Other grits between these can be used if needed. I'm gonna get my dual action sander out again and get the 80 grit equipped to do the majority of the heavy sanding. And sanding this upper edge is pretty easy, but attention to detail is needed here to make sure that there's no low or high spots. We want a nice even edge as well as a proper contour on the back edge. When it's all finished, I want it to look like the stock grill came this way, so getting just the right shapes and contours are important. Here's a shot of how mine looks after some thorough sanding with all the grits. Overall, this is taking shape pretty good, but there are some minor imperfections that I want to fix before painting this up. So, I'll dispense out some body filler and hardener and start mixing that up. Bondo will get the job done, but I like to use Evercoat Rage Ultra for most of my projects. I'm applying a moderate amount of filler here to make sure that I get full coverage on the whole grill. I'll let this harden up for a while and then come back with my DA sander and start with a 120 or a 180 grit and then refine it all the way down to a 400 grit. This is the step where I'll need to spend a lot of attention to detail. I want to make sure that the final lines and curves look factory fresh when it's all finished. After a fair bit of sanding, this is how mine looks. I can't really show how this feels, but trust me, it's pretty smooth. Now let's start to paint this. I'll get a tack cloth out and thoroughly wipe down all the surfaces so that there's minimal dirt and dust left over from the sanding. Then I'll grab some aerosol primer filler. Personally, I like the Spraymax brand and their 1K self-etching primer is usually my go-to. Once I have it primed, then I'll get out some sandpaper again. This time I'm grabbing some 400 grit to knock down any remaining dust or dirt nibs from priming. Later, I'll sand the whole thing with 800 grit to get it smoothed out even further. To flat black this back to a professional finish, I'm once again going with the Spraymax brand and I'm using their 1K trim paint in the matte black finish. And well, here's how mine turned out after a couple coats. This thing looks phenomenal. The inside area looks like it came from the factory already gutted out like this. There's virtually no sign of the cutting or repairing and I think we're good to go for reassembly. The front piece that was previously removed and set off to the side can be reattached now. Slowly start to snap it back in place while making sure that there's enough clearance for the tabs to pass through. In some spots, there was some repair material added that might impede on the reinstallation of this part. In those circumstances, there may be additional sanding to allow for proper tab placement. When it's properly snapped together, it should look like this and we're ready for the mesh installation. And speaking of the mesh, here's a look at the mesh piece that we have for sale on our website. This is pre-cut and pre-bent specifically for the 2015 and newer Dodge Charger. All of the right bends and cutouts have been made in all the right spots. The mesh piece installs from the back and drops right into place like so. It's important to note that the bent tabs are facing towards the front of the grill and wrap around the edge. The bottom edge should be sitting pretty flush as seen here. Whereas the sides and tops are intentionally made a little bit oversized to account for varying depths of repair material thickness. If the installer finds the gaps are too large, then the mesh can be pushed in to close up that gap. 
That's typically not needed though, and I did this install with the mesh not touching directly the left or right edges. To temporarily hold the mesh and grill together, I'll grab some cable ties and foam. The foam will help protect the paint, while the ties will keep the mesh in place while we bond it to the grill. For the best results, I like to loop the tail end of the tie around the grill and through the mesh, so that the head of the tie is resting on the back of the mesh. There's a little bit of a fine line between getting these on too loose or too tight. They need to be tight enough for the mesh to not move, and to have the mesh tight up against the back of the grill frame, but not so tight that the ties are distorting the grill frame. It might take a couple tries to get just the right tension, and it'll feel right when the tie is properly tightened. With all of these in place, I'll cut the tail ends of the ties off and throw those away. I'm just going to do one final check from the front real quick. There doesn't appear to be any gaps or warpage of any sort that I can see, so I think I'm good to go. To bond the mesh and grill frame together, I'll get out the remaining plyo grip that was used from earlier. This stuff works great to form a permanent bond between the two materials. I'm dispensing this on and through the mesh to make sure that it gets good contact between the two parts. After I have enough of it on there, I'll grab a small brush and try to evenly distribute it around and work it in and over every spot that I can find the mesh to attach to. To bond the sides, it's the same process, but a little extra plyo grip might need to be used if there's a gap to bridge. Again, I had a fair bit of space between the mesh and grill frame, but it wasn't an issue after I took the brush and moved the adhesive around a little bit. Now I'll let this harden up for a while and then come back and cut off the ties and remove the foam and throw those away. The mesh mod is now complete. It's time to flip it around and see how this turned out. Wow, look at how seamless all of this looks. The grill looks amazing. It's not even on the car yet. The crosshair is gone and this is looking better than ever. Overall, this install really isn't too difficult. The main challenge to deal with is simply the time for the materials to cure and the time that goes into the sanding. The rest of this is fairly easy to do with a limited selection of tools. Here's a few pictures of the grill shown in this video installed on a charger. I love how this turned out. There's almost an SRT-ish look to it and removing the crosshairs really does wonders for the vehicle. Well, that's all I have for this video. I hope you liked it, and if you have any questions about this one, feel free to contact me. And thanks for watching.